Hi, I'm Phil Brown. I'm at ACM for the audio production event, and I'm here to answer questions from Sound and Sound. Yeah, it's always tricky at the time um, knowing how successful certain things will be, but uh, I think working on Beggar's Banquet felt pretty special. It was being filmed at the time, so a lot of people around, movie cameras. Uh, it was one of the longest albums that was made back in 68. I think it took six weeks, which was a, a long period of time. I guess Led Zeppelin, when I worked with them, were already pretty successful. I, I think I worked on like the third album. Um, I think one of the big surprises, although not mentioned there, is possibly Dido that I did in 97, because it was a kind of throwaway album uh, for Rollo's younger sister. It took six weeks, cost about 60 grand, and we never, no one, none of us thought it would be as successful as it was, it sold about 12 million records in the end. So you don't always know, to be honest. And when I worked with Hendrix and really with Bob Marley, it was before they became these kind of legends. Hmm, that's tricky. I guess it all, a lot of it comes down to technology. I think some of the best technology were the kind of 16 track tape machines on two inch. I just love the sound of that. So I think kind of uh, where it's gone, it's so much easier in some ways to make records. There's so many choices, which can also be a bad thing. But I think for me, analog was probably one of the best inventions, and um, digital could be one of the worst, although I do use digital now, obviously, like everyone else. Well, when I started at Olympic <coughs> um, in 67, I was 16 years old, and Keith Grant, who ran the studio, he said, um, I've just got one piece of device and that is don't speak unless you're spoken to and then be polite and in some ways that was a pretty good piece of advice for people living in studios you're dealing with lots of different people all the time different characters different personalities so um, I think that's been quite a good piece of advice really just don't jump in there just wait your time check out what's going on before you have an opinion Wow, it's tricky because vocals is probably the hardest thing to record in a way um, for lots of reasons. I mean, it's a fragile instrument in itself and it changes from day to day. So some days you can get a great vocal sound, leave everything completely the same and it's different the next day. I've often set up dummy mics. Um, so having the mic that they think they're singing to in front of them and then a mic off to the side that is actually what I'm recording. Um, because that way, it doesn't, you don't tend to pop because you're not singing straight into it and they can move their head around with a bit more freedom. So I do do that sometimes. But having a, a singer who has a good mic vocal technique, you know, mic technique, um, and who kind of knows what they're doing makes your life much easier. It's a bit like having a good drummer who knows how to tune his kit. The drums will always sound better. So it's no hard and fast rules with vocals, but I would say that that is a possibility. And don't compress too much on recording, you can always compress later.